getting kicked off of social media every single day. Our former president, President Trump, is banned from social media everywhere because no one wants to hear his voice in the social media circles. Big tech does not like what President Trump has to say. So here we are in a place where it's, it's getting out of control. I'm an elected member of Congress. I represent Georgia's 14th district. My voice is the elected voice for my district, but yet Twitter wants to suspend me and people all over Twitterverse are cheering and saying I should be kicked off. And this is completely wrong. Imagine this, not too long ago, I was sued by a communist pack for banning them from my page because of the horrible, nasty things they were saying to me on my Twitter page, and they sued me because, you want to know what they said? They said that they could not uh, see what I was saying. By being banned from, that, from my Twitter page, I was, I was stopping their First Amendment, and they couldn't see what I was saying. Therefore, they couldn't participate. But yet Twitter suspended me for 12 hours. So you know what that really means? That's, that bans everyone from seeing what I had to say. So what, should, should this pact sue Twitter now? Should people sue Twitter because they're banning my voice? You see, it's a hypocrisy. And these are the things that we can't allow to stand. I will not stop speaking. I will not stop tweeting. I will not stop posting. I will not stop asking questions. Because if you have members of Congress that aren't asking questions, then I don't know what kind of country uh, we're going to have. But the reason why I am promoting this Fire Fauci Act is because we have a, uh, a federal government employee that has lied. And it is public record this man has lied. Senator Rand Paul talked about it today in the hearing, in the Senate hearing. But yet he is still running the show as if he is center stage, and that is a problem. You see, in, in the private world, when people lie and they mislead people in their jobs, they get fired. All of you are members of the press and you work for media companies, and if you were to lie on the job and you were to mislead people or you were to do something wrong, and someone, someone might argue and say you do mislead people, but your company would fire you. However, here we are, we have Dr. Anthony Fauci that just continues to keep doing, doing his job and saying whatever he wants, but yet he funded to the Wuhan lab the gain-of-function research that allowed COVID-19 to become what it is to kill people. And I think he needs to be fired. And so do millions and millions of Americans. And I think it's perfectly fine to talk about this on social media. After all, that's what social media started as, a place for people to meet, to communicate, to share thoughts and ideas. And there's nothing wrong with it. And with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you guys ask some questions. In that Martin. same vein, Congresswoman, uh, do you think that you should resign for misleading people? About Identify the yourself after, after the question. Jackie Alleman from the Washington Post. Okay, no, I think that's absurd. I, I've not, I haven't, I have not misled anyone. I have not put out misinformation. So no, that I would not that tweet even over consider the it. That coronavirus was not dangerous for people under the age of 65 who are not obese, which is factually inaccurate. You know what? There's all kinds of things that are dangerous for people under 65 and, and not obese. Car accidents are dangerous. The flu is dangerous. Pneumonia is dangerous. There's many things that are dangerous for people under 65 and who people that are not obese. I was talking about the highest amount of deaths, the highest risk factors is for the older people and the people that fall into obesity. And those are the facts that you can simply look up. Are you worried for next your question? Right? Yes. What's your reaction to uh, the House Ethics Committee rejecting your appeal of the uh, mask fine? Uh, well, number one, four out of five of the Democrats on that committee have their name on a resolution to expel me from Congress. And so when I went in for that hearing, I asked for them to recuse themselves, which I don't know if they did recuse themselves because they didn't produce a record of their vote. So that is something I would like to find out because I think it's wrong. If they're signing a resolution to expel me, 
then they shouldn't be the people voting on the committee. I think that's definitely a conflict of interest. Yes. Alex Nazarian, Yahoo News. Um, did President Trump lie when he said the election was stolen from him? Uh, that we're here talking about my tweets, we're talking about Twitter suspensions, we're talking about Anthony Fauci, and I'm looking forward to all of the election audits uh, to see what happened. There's a lot of evidence, you know, thousands of people have signed their name on uh, saying at risk of perjury in court, saying that they witnessed election fraud, and I think those people should be heard. Yes. Hey, Robert Draper with the New York Times. Uh, how many times... Now, over the last four years, have you been suspended or banned from a social media company? Mm, that is a very good question. I don't remember the exact count. Um, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, I think it's been three times on Twitter this year. Four, four times, I think, now. Four times now. Um, multiple times on Facebook. Uh, I think one time was like 30 days on Facebook. Yeah, so it's, a bit. yeah it's, I mean, is your objection to a private business um, uh, doing what they're doing like this, that they should not be allowed to establish these kinds of rules of the road over what can and can't be said, or is, it, or is your objection that they are doing it arbitrarily, um, only to one side rather than to all sides? Well, the, you see, Twitter is, uh, I'll, I'll speak specifically on Twitter, There, here's, here's what is just I, I, it's hard for me to even comprehend it. Twitter is prolific with porn. There's porn all over Twitter. There are all kinds of people all over Twitter. We have um, leaders of, of in foreign countries. Many people all over the world are on Twitter, but it seems to be the only people they heavily censor and ban are conservative Americans. And this is an American company. So this is why conservative Americans are always outraged and appalled at why are we the only ones censored and banned when Twitter's a platform that has disgusting porn, it, it has had terrorists, it has had, uh, you know, all kind of criminals, but all kinds of people. But do you think those things should be banned also? Is it's that had people uh, talking about killing President Trump. I mean, these are, any kind, if, if, there's, if anyone is threatening to kill a president, why would they have a Twitter page? Right. But yet, if I tweet about... Um, talking about COVID-19 or people are concerned about the vaccine, I get suspended so for 12 hours. So it's not so much hours. that they shouldn't ban people, it's that it's hypocritical and arbitrary, the means by which they're doing so? Is that what you're saying? Or? It's very targeted, it's, it's political, and it's very obvious, and it's obvious to everyone. They, they target, um, ban, and censor conservative Americans. Have you been warned at all from Twitter about being banned permanently because you said this is like your fourth time and you keep posting things that Twitter says is, you know, violating its rules. Are you worried about a permanent ban? I don't think we've gotten a notification for that. I don't believe we've gotten that one to you. Yeah. Yes. How many Democratic co-sponsors do you have on the Fauci lied um, bill? No Democrat no co-sponsors. No, no Democrat co-sponsors. No. Can you go on my Emily Brooks, Washington Examiner? Um, I was wondering... Um, Given the possibility of being you know, banned out there, is there any alternative free speech like social media platform that you like or would gravitate to, like Parler or Getter, and would you recommend President Trump joining one of those? Um, I don't, you know what, I don't have a personal favorite of mine. I'm, uh, since I've been a member of Congress, it's hard to really explore them completely. Um, I think President Trump right now finds that putting out his statements via email uh, works really well because everyone's sharing them everywhere. Uh, for him, that works really well. And I hadn't really thought past the fact that Twitter just shouldn't censor and ban people of what I might do. Yes. Aaron Navarro, CBS News. Uh, Whip Scalise said today he got vaccinated, citing this Delta variant that's going around and said he's confident that he's safe and effective. Two questions. Have you yourself gotten vaccinated, and do you disagree with the Republican whip? Well, your your first question is a violation of my HIPAA rights. You see, with HIPAA rights, uh, we don't have to reveal our medical records, and that also involves our vaccine records. And do you disagree with uh, Whip Scalise when he says he's confident the vaccine is safe and effective? Oh, no, I don't disagree with him. I, I just think it should be everyone's choice. That is that is what I've been saying. No one should be discriminated against because they choose to not get the vaccine. And I don't believe people should be discriminated against 
uh, for choosing not to wear masks. But I, I will tell you something I absolutely do disagree with. I disagree with the recommendation for children to be wearing masks. I think that is, that is completely wrong. Children, especially young children, need to see adults' faces. They need to see each other's faces. This is, this is what helps them learn emotion and expression. Um, it's, it's how they play and talk with one another. It helps them phonetically. It helps them with their speech. And I just, I, I think it's more harmful, specifically harmful to children to, for them to wear masks. And, and our kids are healthy. Most children are extremely healthy. And most children are not at risk uh, of, of having serious problems or death from COVID-19. And on Twitter, have you been in contact with them in terms of appealing this latest ban? Um, I have not been in contact with them yet. I've tried to contact them in the past, and I don't really get any response. Congresswoman Leader okay. McConnell said today that he wanted to encourage everybody to get a vaccine and to ignore all of those other voices that are giving demonstrably bad advice. Do you encourage your constituents to get vaccinated? I encourage people to make up their own mind. And again, it's, it's each person's individual choice. And I think it's very important to keep it that way and also make sure no one is discriminated against. I don't believe in discrimination on any grounds, whether it's race, religion, um, sexual preferences, mask, vaccines, whatever. I just don't believe in discrimination. Are you worried that not encouraging people to get vaccinated is, is leading, is causing people to make harmful decisions that will ultimately lead to more death? No, I am not worried about that at all. I, I'm encouraging people to make up their own minds. But aren't you but also Congressman. discouraging them by spreading misinformation? You said that 600 deaths, 6,000 deaths are related to the vaccine, and that's not backed up by science. Well, actually, on the CDC website, Tia, and I really hope you look I know, it up. I looked it up. It um, says, it says that right here. Died after the vaccine, but not right. That the it vaccine says during this time, bears, bears received 12,313 reports of death among people who received a COVID-19 vaccine. But that doesn't mean the vaccine caused it. Right? But it may sure. mean that it caused it. We don't know, and I think this needs to be investigated. But I think it's important to investigate it, don't you? Don't we want to know the truth? The question As is, a journalist, you definitely want to know the truth, right? So you can report that, because after all, you're reporting a lot of information, which means what you report makes you responsible as well. And the question, the Twitter tagged your tweets that said the vaccine caused death as misinformation. Are you That's spreading Twitter. misinformation? Is Twitter the CDC? I don't believe so. I don't think Twitter is in charge of our government, is it? I think, I think you need to analyze the angle you're coming from. Twitter is not in charge of what information is correct and what information is incorrect. And you see, that's another problem because Twitter is declaring itself the judge of whose voice is right and whose voice is wrong. But wouldn't it be appropriate for us to investigate these 12,000 deaths and find out, did the vaccine cause their death? What else caused their death? What, what exactly happened there before we the FDA approves this vaccine? Tom, I think that would be the better you, thing. You've called the yes. vaccine experimental. You've pointed out the deaths, the side effects. You said, just say no. President Trump, who you are allies with, you're very loyal to him. He has said the vaccine is saving the world. He's gotten it. He's called it safe and effective. He has almost never disparaged it or called it experimental. To what do you account for this disparity between the two of you who agree on just about everything? We're not in disagreement. So I call it experimental because that is exactly how it's labeled. It is labeled for experimental use. So that term is correct. It's what everyone's calling it. That is, that is the type of use it's in because it's not FDA approved. President Trump should be proud of the accomplishment that his administration made um, along with Vice President Pence. They worked very hard on this, and it was a miracle for them to, to come up with a vaccine in such a short amount of time. But what I am saying is, is it shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't be mandated. Information needs to be found out. There are reports of side effects. There are obviously reports of deaths, and I think these are important things to check out before it's FDA approved, but here we have colleges requiring students to be vaccinated before students can return to college. I mean, we just had this young lady that uh, lost her scholarship. I believe it was $200,000 scholarship over at Brigham Young, and she can't, she's losing her scholarship 
because she doesn't want to get the vaccine and her doctor said it would it would put her in high risk because of a medical condition that she currently has there was a 13 year old boy in michigan that just recently died after taking the vaccine you see there's a lot of things happening and i think it's important for us to analyze all of it before governments and schools and businesses say absolutely you have to take this vaccine it shouldn't be mandated and people shouldn't be treated wrongly or judged harshly because they are just saying i don't want to take the vaccine but, but why do you think president trump who's the leader of your political movement why do you think he hasn't come out and said i don't i don't think people should be forced to take the vaccine he hasn't come out and said, you know, be careful of the side effects, be careful, it's experimental. He's just said, this is a good thing, this is a big accomplishment on my part, you should take the vaccine. I think Why is he not I, highlighting the same issue? I think you have to ask him that question. That's not for me to answer. Yes, so, ma'am. But if they get to the point where it is fully FDA approved and not experimental, at that point, will you be okay with the mandates for vaccines? Will you encourage people to get it? I'm going to always be in the camp of it should be people's choice. I just think it should be their choice. I, I, I just think we're going down a really bad road when we're telling people you have to do this and if you don't do it, you're excluded. You're treated like a second class citizen. You're not allowed on campus. You're gonna be fired from your job. We're not gonna let you in church because you refuse to take this FDA approved vaccine. I just think that's the wrong place to, for us to go as Americans. Well, there are a lot that's of other a, vaccines. So that's, the, that's one issue, the, the mandates. Mm -hmm. But is it a separate issue that, uh, you know, the the health side effects of the vaccines. I mean, do you believe, knowing what you know now, do you think that it was inadvisable of the administration to release these um, vaccines without FDA approval? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I think well, this has been and this is an extraordinary times. Right. I don't want to criticize anyone's judgment there. This is a certainly a pandemic we've never had before, and it's also. A, a, a virus that was developed, unfortunately, through our tax dollars, through Dr. Fauci, and, and made in a Wuhan lab, and the purpose of it seems to be to be a bioweapon. Now, the questions I think we should be asking is not only, like, we need to analyze the side effects and why are these people, these deaths being reported, we also need to ask China a lot of questions. Do you think they'll tell us? Uh, you know, I would handle China a lot differently. I, I certainly would not allow anyone involved with the CCP in our colleges and universities. I would not give student visas to people and to any students that are loyal to the CCP. I certainly would not allow Chinese businesses to function inside of our country if they're loyal to the CCP. And I would demand for China to tell us what is the protocol that you've developed when it comes down to COVID-19. And then secondly, China, how many other bioweapons do you have? What are they? And what are you planning to do with them? See, I think these are the questions all of us should be asking because China really is our common enemy. And we should look at China very much through those eyes and at least through Republicans and Democrats. I would hope to God we can come together Given on that. Given that, you don't expect they to level with you, do you? I mean, even if we prevented CCP members from going to our colleges? Do you think they'd say, oh, okay, yeah, all right, now we'll tell you? Well, China's long-term goal is they, they want to be the number one country in the world. They want to dominate us economically. They want to dominate, dominate our military. They want to dominate us in every single way. And they, that, that is what they're trying to do. Right. And if America, if, if our government, if all of us together don't get serious about who, who China is and what their goals are, then we're the fools, aren't we? And we, we really would be foolish to ignore this great threat. And so in my eyes, I think, you know, I take people at their word. China seriously wants to dominate the entire world. When, when Joe Biden is talking about adapting the, the Green New Deal and moving towards those policies and saying we're gonna cut down our carbon emissions down to net zero, do you know what China is saying? They're saying they're going to increase their carbon emissions. You want to know why? Because they want to grow their economy much bigger than ours. That's, that is a very foolish road for us to go down. And so I, my, my um, encouragement is to everyone, Republicans, Democrats, all of us Americans, we seriously 
need to take a hard look at China and get on the same page and stop this threat that, that how many other bioweapons are there? What other things do, would they do? What links would they go to to dominate the entire world? But are you saying, people think it may have escaped from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but you're saying it didn't escape, that they made a weapon. That's not what I said. You That's just not said what I said. No, yeah, I said that it was developed to be a bioweapon, but I did not say what you just said. You're trying to put words in no, my no, mouth. Well, can you explain what happened to the bioweapon? I think China needs to explain it. But what do you believe may have happened? I, I, I couldn't, I wasn't there. So I think China needs to explain it. China owes us the answers. Maybe developing as a bioweapon, but it accidentally, but it somehow accidentally escaped. In other words, those two aren't mutually exclusive. I think there needs to be serious investigations, and we need to tell China. Look, we're gonna, we need to tell them if you do not come clean and tell the truth, and tell the entire world what happened with this, then America is responsible to to have some sort of that. We tariffs are a great way to deal with China. They care about money and business. They want their students in our country. Send them back. Send these people back out of our colleges. Stop them. We should stop their uh, ability to fund our universities. We should put rules in place to protect our country until China is willing to be honest and truthful. I, I think that's what we should do. As parents, um, I don't know what kind of parents everyone else, or even if you have children, I, th you know, I always there's consequences when your kids do something wrong. And if you don't make consequences, then you raise children that, that, are, that don't understand that. So if our dealings with China and in any other country in the world is that we just lay down and let them do whatever they want, well, I don't think we're going to be able to handle that very well. It's just not a good way. It's not good policy. Congresswoman, do you accept that over 600,000 Americans have died as a result of the coronavirus? Of course I do. So what do you, how do you take into account that death rates have plummeted since the vaccine has uh, gone into circulation? And that the only people who have now been in hospitals and who have mostly been hospitalized are people who have not been vaccinated? I think it's a big combination of herd immunity, right? And there's how many millions of people, is it, is it 30 something million, I believe? I, I apologize, I'd have to look the number up, that were tested positive for COVID-19 um, and that happened before the, everyone was vaccinated. So we've got millions and millions of people who developed immunity naturally, and then we've, we're getting millions and millions of people that are developing immunity through the vaccine. Again, I'm not denying any truth. I'm just saying it should be a choice. That's all I'm saying. It should be a choice. And no one should treat anyone bad because, or discriminate against them or reject them from a school or a business or, or anything just because they're choosing to allow their body to develop natural immunity. There's nothing wrong with that. But to go back to your original why we're here, you were not suspended from Twitter for saying the vaccine should be a choice. That okay, Tia, why was I suspended then? Because they said your tweets contained misinformation about the vaccine itself. Where, where was opinion. the misinformation? Well, according to Twitter, it was in that tweet that said, 6,000 deaths are caused by the vaccine. Again, I just want to... You're right, because the number went up and I checked it today and it's over 12,000. But, but again, the question that I have for you is, is it right for you to put out not just your opinion about who should and shouldn't be vaccinated, but you're putting out information about the vaccine that is being labeled okay, as misleading. Okay, so is it right for him to flip and flop and say different things all the time? Is that right? But yet... He's still the, the head guy and the one everybody's listening to. So let me just say this. Tony Fauci, uh, I don't know if he has a Twitter page. I don't even look. Is, has he ever been suspended or banned on Twitter for, for flipping and flopping and giving different information? What about the fact that he's lied and it's proven in his emails? Has everyone got him saying, you know, we can't have you on social media. We can't put you on the news. You shouldn't be on CNN. You shouldn't be in the AJC. You shouldn't be anywhere because you lied, Dr. Fauci. We don't see that, do we? No. Okay, I got it wrong. 6,000 was wrong according to CDC. It's reporting over 12,000. You also have uh, claimed that defeating obesity is going to protect people from the coronavirus. Do you still believe that? Obesity is known to be the highest risk factor. It is it, like 78% of people that were hospitalized and died were obese. And that, that is part of the statistics and the data. 
yes, I believe if we can reduce obesity, I think we are going to help people be protected from COVID-19. We're also going to help them be protected from a host of many, many other problems. I think that's a good thing, don't you? Yes. What are your proposals to reduce obesity? Well, I used to own a gym, you know, exercise and eating healthy. Those actually work, and they're maybe not fun to eat healthy all the time and, and exercise a lot. Not everybody likes it, but it actually works. It re reduces obesity, even walking a lot every day. There's, there's been great stories. I don't know if you've seen them. A lot of people have been talking about how during the shutdowns, they walked a lot, and they lost a lot of weight. These are great things. Those are success stories. Um, so I would love to see, instead of investing uh, an unknown amount of money in, in big government health care, I would love for us to invest in, especially our kids. If, if our kids in school are raised with great healthy eating habits and good exercise programs, that's teaching kids um, to become adults with good lifelong yeah, I think habits. The first lady, Michelle Obama. Had that's it. right. Yeah, she did. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify, um, when it comes to um, requiring vaccines for things like colleges and schools, uh, are, is that your position on all vaccines? Because a lot of them are mandated for a lot of people. And, um, but people can also say, due to religious reasons, they can choose not to take vaccines. And, and, and I think it's really, you know, it's people's choice. It definitely should be a choice. And we also have to remember, we're talking about a virus that I think it's nearly around 99% of people survive it. And, and so this, thank God, thank God for that, right? So what I'm saying is it's not wrong to say it should be people's choice. And it doesn't make someone a bad person because they don't want to take the vaccine. It doesn't make them a bad person because they don't want to wear a mask. And they're not responsible for other people's health. Because when we start going down that road, then where does it end? That means if we say people are responsible for spreading COVID-19, then we're saying people are responsible for spreading every kind of germ there is. And, and that's, that's an impossibility. We can't live in a world where we are actually blaming people for causing anyone else to get sick. We've never lived that way um, in any time of history that I know of. And I, I think that's dangerous. Do you feel any responsibility for keeping people in Georgia safe? You know, there are children, skinny people, who have died of the coronavirus. Do you feel any responsibility? <laughs> Tia, you crack me up. Um, you know what, I think people's responsibility is their own to read the information and it's everywhere. You can't go by any street corner practically and not see something about COVID-19. I believe in people's own individual responsibility to read, to find out, and to make their own decision. Do you believe in science? I believe in God. And of course, there is science. I don't worship science or think that science rules everything. I believe that God rules everything. A Congresswoman Marie Newman called you a deeply broken person and hoped that you would get some help. Do you have any response to this? I think um, my colleague, Democrat Marie Newman, that is across the hall from me, uh, should probably get some help herself because she's the one that attacked me on a, on a video by planting a flag out there in the hallway, but starting on my nameplate. You see, she started that. You do understand that, right? She started by a video on my nameplate, and then it pans to her where, in a militant fashion, she plants a flag. But, you know, and then she talks about her um, biological son, who she calls her daughter, and she talks about one, she wants her son to be able to go in women's bathrooms and have all the same rights as women, but you know what, I have daughters too, and I don't want men in my daughter's bathroom. What about our rights? Don't you believe in your rights, our women's rights? And we don't need biological men taking over and conquering women like they are trying to do in sports and in our bathrooms and in rape crisis centers and pregnancy and having babies. No, biological men do not, do not get pregnant and they do not have babies and they are not birthing people. Mothers give birth Other and mothers science. are biological women. Other than science. So you yeah, that's science, <laughs> right. There's two sets of chromosomes. If you want to believe in science, two sets of chromosomes. 
And that's perhaps something that Murray Newman should explore. Why then not repeat the science when it comes to coronavirus, if you're, if you're able to believe in it when it comes to things right. like being transgender? I, I, I have. There's reported side effects, and there's reports of death, and I'm saying those should be investigated. But I'm also caring about our individual rights, which we as Americans have, and we should really appreciate. And that's the right issue. Just very slightly off topic. It's, yes. Um, uh, did, um, uh, did you speak to Leader McCarthy about wanting to be on the January 6th committee? Yes, yes, I did. Did you? I saw you handing out pieces of paper a couple weeks ago during the January sixth vote to Republican members. Was that to you? Uh, were was was that basically a message asking them to? No, no, that had something to do totally with another bill. Yeah, right. no, it wasn't about and January sixth. Back, back to this, the White House last week admitted or said that they're tracking social media websites and flagging anything that they deemed inappropriate or misinformation and relaying that back to the social media companies. One, should the government be doing that to the American people? And two, do you think you were a victim of possibly somebody who's tracking your website? Uh, number one, no. I do not believe that the Biden administration or the government should be working with social media to decide whose uh, pages that they should about COVID-19 that they should shut down. I don't know if it was my page or not, maybe. Perhaps that's why my Twitter page got suspended. But I think that had to do with Facebook. And I just, I think it's a dangerous place when you have the government saying, these people need to go, these people need to go, these people need to go. But yet they're unwilling to, to look maybe in other places and say, oh, this, you know, we're, we think that Antifa and, and BLM riots are bad. That's what a lot of um, Republicans and conservatives care about. We care about the damage and the billions of dollars and, and the cities that were burned and targeted and police officers and monuments and federal buildings. We care about those things, but we aren't seeing that talked about as imagine, I mean, uh, it's hard to imagine that most of the time those were called peaceful protest. Um, but as far as the Biden administration telling Facebook what they should and shouldn't do, I, I think that's a big problem, just like Facebook telling conservatives what they should and shouldn't say or kicking them off their platform is also a big problem. It's a two violation more, of speech. Two more questions, guys. Two more questions. Question an audience with any of you? Yes, Hi, uh, Hugo Lowe with The Guardian. Um, would you be able to shed some light into your conversation with uh, Lee McCarthy about the January 6th Select Committee and whether it was receptive to your um, request? Um, we just uh, talked briefly and he asked me why I wanted to serve on it and I had just told him that I was interested in serving on the January 6th committee because I didn't want to see another witch hunt and that's what the Russian collusion uh, conspiracy that all of that was nothing but a witch hunt and now we know that that didn't happen and I believe that we're at risk of, of that happening again um, with this January 6th committee and those were my concerns and that's why I wanted to serve on there. One do you more. think you made a good pick for the committee, McCarthy? Um, I hope so. We'll see. Well, he's announced his pick. He's got uh, Jim Jordan, Jim Banks, mm -hmm. uh, Troy Nels. I mean, presumably you would have liked to see yourself in the committee as well. Of course. I'm just saying I hope, I hope they do a good job. I hope so. The people who are wearing the yellow stars uh, in protest of vaccinations, what, what message do you have for them? I haven't seen that. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about that. Well, we're done. Yeah. <laughs>